you sing. What? Ask what you can do for your country. The hula hoop remains controversial. <laughs> I can't let myself be concerned with an actor's personal problems. My job is to write... You said I didn't read my one dramatic line with conviction. Well, I'd like to try it once more. Not a move, Mr. Hammond. This isn't a squirt gun. I want to make sure you sit quietly during my brief performance. See if this isn't an improvement. Listen closely to this reading. I'm going to kill you. He says here that it's an unimportant little role and that I'm a very unimportant little actor. He says, I can't wear long pants because I'm the perennial juvenile who never grew up. He'll regret this as long as he lives. The Golden Age of Television will present Jackie Cooper, starring in Curtain Call, with Barry Atwater, after these messages. Renowned orchestra leader. The Golden Age of Television presents Curtain Call. You're a weak, sniveling, silly infant. A baby. And you'll never grow up. I'm not a baby. I'm a man. I'm a man. You're a baby. They call you Sonny. No man was ever called Sonny. You're a child, an infant, a baby, a baby, a baby. One day I'll show you I'm not a baby. I will grow up. I will be a man. <laughs> I'm sorry, Doctor. That was silly. Quite uncalled for. It was a charming performance. Really charming. Well, that'll do for today, Ryan. Thanks very much. Doctor, have you ever noticed how much the plays of Punch and Judy resemble those of Shakespeare? No, I haven't, Mr. Shade. Hate is always violent, love always passionate, humor always uproarious. Nothing settled really about Shakespeare. Or about puppets. Roscoe Hammond's not only a top critic, he's an authority on Shakespeare. Now, I wonder what he'd think of that. Can I have a match, Doctor? Yes. Oh. So I'm not allowed to have matches anymore. Might set fire to myself, eh? At what point do you determine if a man is definitely insane? May I? You've certainly got the good looks and the temperament for an actor. Now, just between the two of us, were you really any good? Well, that's always a matter of opinion. Unfortunately, the public always believes the critics. At least the critics were kind of the play. It was a turkey. Oh, Mr. Hammond said it was a smash. And everyone believed him. He gave it a rave notice. Rave notice. A rave notice. Say, listen to this. Listen. I praise from that miserable old buzzard, Roscoe Hammond. Farewell drink rises off the ground like a great gaudy balloon and stays up all evening. Oh, isn't this thrilling? Listen, listen. He called me an adorable gammon. I'm not exactly sure what that is. It's kind of a sexless pixie. Very popular on the continent, dear. <laughs> oh, oh, look at that. What's the matter? You better read the rest of Hammond's review. There's only one flaw in this jewel of a show. A really unimportant little role played by a really unimportant little actor, the former Hollywood child star, Sonny Shea. Well, why does he say that? I thought Mr. Shade was wonderful. Mm, wonderful. Sonny has at last outgrown the Muppet curls and delicious dimples that made him the baby darling of the cinema many years ago. But alas, the odor of talcum powder still clings to him. Oh, I think that's terribly cruel and unfair. Well, Mr. Shade's a fine, sensitive actor. And very mature. Mm, very mature. 
Sonny, who appeared briefly as the rejected suitor, had one intensely dramatic speech to the bridegroom. I'm going to kill you. I'm sure the audience fully expected him to draw a squirt gun and drown the bounder. Oh. <laughs> well, that's not too bad of you, except for that. Good morning, Shay. Good morning. I suppose you've seen the morning papers. The reviews of the show, I mean. You mean Roscoe Hammond's review, to be exact? I think his was by far the most amusing, don't you? No, I, I think it was very unfair and wrong. I know how you must feel, but... You're being you kind to me, pitying me. Just get away from me, you adorable little gammon. Oh, come on, Shade. This kid didn't write the review. Hey, where are you going, Shade? Our work is just beginning. We got a lot of kinks staring out of this baby before we trundled off to Broadway. Well, I'll relieve you of the first kink. I'm quitting the show. Quitting? What's the matter with you? You hounded me for weeks for this part. It's really a very unimportant little part, and I'm really a very unimportant little actor. I still smell a talcum powder. I can't wear long pants because I never grew up. I'm the perennial juvenile. Find someone to replace me, Norman. I'm leaving the show. Good morning, Mr. Shade. Can I have some coffee, please? Sure thing. Mr. Shade's an actor. You've seen him a dozen times. Don't you remember Sonny Shade? Hey, Mr. Shade, I saw you on television, a movie you did when you was about seven or eight years old. You was a good actor when you was a kid. Can I just drink my coffee, please? <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure, Mr. Shade. <laughs> <laughs> But that's just the kind of swill I'd expect pigs like you to appreciate. Mr. Hammond? Yes? I'm Roscoe Hammond. I'm Christopher Shade. You reviewed my performance in Farewell Drink this morning, remember? Oh, yes. The ex-child star. Yes, Sonny Shade. I'm afraid I wasn't very kind to you, Mr. Shade. Just call me Sonny. I didn't recognize you. You look considerably different off stage. More mature, you think? Now, Mr. Shade, I call him as I see him. So does a baseball umpire, and you're not supposed to talk back to him either. I'm sure when you've given a few more performances, you'll begin to shape up splendidly. I'm leaving the show. Well... I can't believe that my review was instrumental in getting you dismissed. And even if it was, maybe it's all for the best. The part, obviously, was not for you. You'll find something better. Something I can play in diapers with long curls and a lollipop, Mr. Hammond? Mr. Shade, I think your sarcasm is uncalled for. Do you? Well, let me be melodramatic for a moment. Let me tell you about the many long years it takes to erase the stigma of Hollywood child star. About the many small parts in straw hat theaters, places where I thought people wouldn't know or remember me. Ring theaters, circle theaters, outdoor theaters, and all the time the name Sonny following me everywhere. I should think it would help to have had a successful name in the past. Not when that name is Sonny. Ex-child stars are branded as eternal juveniles. They have to sneak into maturity unnoticed. And I finally did it. I finally did it with this one bad little role, an adult role. I finally killed and buried Sonny forever. And then with a drop of ink, you brought him back to life. Stronger, bigger, funnier than ever. I won't start from scratch again, Mr. Hammond. I can't. I can't let myself be concerned with an actor's personal problems. My job is to write... You honest... said I didn't read my one dramatic line with conviction. Well, I'd like to try it once more. Not a move, Mr. Hammond. This isn't a squirt gun. I want to make sure you sit quietly during my brief performance. See if this isn't an improvement. Listen closely to this reading. I'm going to kill you. Effective? Convincing? Adult? I'm uh, Harold Durant, the attorney who sent for her. 
Well, they showed me a list of names, and I picked yours. It isn't very flattering. I haven't accepted the task of defending you yet. Uh, I'm penniless, if that's the deciding factor. Oh, money is always an inducement. But in many ways, your uh, case interests me without it. You're a ham, Mr. Durant. What? Only a ham accepts a role without pay for the sheer thrill of being seen. Now look, Shade, you're going to need the best legal advice on defense you can get. You're a pretty flip for a man who's sitting in a homicide tank facing a murder indictment. Then he finally died. They're expecting him to go any second. Strange. I hadn't stopped to consider it. Christopher Shea had a murderer. Not just murder, premeditated murder. That's the toughest kind. What kind is easy? For me? Extenuating circumstances, insanity, crimes of passion. Temporary insanity? Not temporary, total. In your case, it couldn't possibly be temporary. It had premeditation written all over it. You went back to the theater and took the gun from the property room. Then you went out on the prowl. One of the first things the police did was check the gun out. But, but it was only a prop gun. I wanted to frighten them. With real bullets. You bought them at a sporting goods store right after you took the gun. I'm tackling a pretty hopeless situation if I decide to defend you. What are you sitting there for? I don't believe I'll need your services, generous as you are in offering them for free. I always say you get what you pay for. Officer? Yeah? I'm leaving. The golden age of television will continue in a moment. The golden age of television. This time I'll kill you! You die now! Take I'll it. kill you, Take kill it. you! Kill you, kill you, kill you! Hey, hey, what's the matter with you? Nothing, nothing's the matter. What are you hiding there? Nothing. Come nothing. on, step aside. Get away from me. Come on, I step, step away aside. from me. This time I killed him, didn't I? Who? Sonny. I killed Sonny. Sonny? When did you kill him? Yesterday, the day before. Recently, anyway. It was in all the newspapers. That's why I'm here. I killed Sonny. I didn't kill a child. I did. Why do you say that? Oh. Well, you knew him as Christopher Shade. I knew him as Sonny. Look, Doc, he's Christopher Shade. That's ridiculous. He was a child. I had to kill him. He haunted me all my life. That's justifiable homicide, isn't it? I think you'd be more comfortable in the hospital. Let's go up there and we'll talk, huh? Yes. I guess I'd like to talk to somebody who understands. You can't imagine what it's like being haunted by delicious moppet curls and darling little dimples all your life, can you? Children never let you grow up, you know. They keep dragging your past out in front of everyone. Can, can you understand that? Yes, I can understand that. I, I had to kill Sonny. Until the boy was dead, I couldn't be a man, you see? Do you see? Yes, I see. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Professional actor, aren't you, Mr. Shade? And I understand a very good one. Thank you, Doctor. The uh, talent of a great actor, I'm told, lies in his ability to uh, live a character so completely on the stage that he actually becomes that character. Isn't that so? Well, it's the method. Once I was a doorknob for an entire week while learning the method. Another time I was a windmill. Once I was outer space. Very difficult. And you insist that you shot Sonny? Well, of course I shot him. Why else would I be in jail waiting trial for murder? I shot him, but he didn't die. So I had to choke him with my hands. These hands! Um, sit down, Mr. Shade. I know this has been a... quite an ordeal for you, but I wonder if you'd be good enough to try one more test, the uh, word association test. You'll probably become very tired taking these tests, and we have a lot to try, but 
In this one, if you'll just give me the first word that occurs to you after I give you a word. All right? Um, blue. Sky. Club. Member. Bonnet. Baby. Powder. Bullet! I'm Carl Block, Assistant District Attorney. How do you do, sir? Sit down, please. Thanks. What's the answer on this fellow Shade? Well, I phoned your office. I, I, I told them I have nothing to say yet. Our office is being needle. Now, we've got to know whether to get out an indictment or commitment papers. We've got to have some action. I've tried test after test, Mr. Block. More than I usually employ. I'm still puzzled. Men are respects, he's... Extremely lucid. Only he manifests one quirk, one aberration. And that quite violently sometimes. Well, yeah, let's see for yourself. pictures you like best. Well, I'm afraid I, I don't like any of them. Mm -hmm. You uh, burn us for a moment? Surely. Would you like a cigarette while you're waiting? Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd, um, I'd like you to listen to a photograph record meanwhile. This is a recording of a man's voice saying different things. Now, he doesn't speak very clearly, so you'll have to listen very carefully. And. When we return, I'd like you to tell what you think he says. Bad diction is offensive to the sensitive ear of an actor, but I'll be happy to attempt it. Listen carefully to the following. Oh, uh, I, uh, S, I, D, O, A. You see, somewhere along the way, Shade lost his identification. Oh, uh, I, uh, in trying to destroy the memory of a childhood, he assumed that he destroyed the child himself. I would have bet anything he was faking. What possible motive would he have had? The victim had died of the bullet wound, and Shade might have hoped to escape the death penalty by feigning insanity. This way, he gains nothing. Well, I guess we're all set. Uh, doctor, would you sign these two, please? Yes, sir. Well, in a way, it's too bad. With Hammond out of danger, Shade might have gotten off with only four years, maybe even less. He didn't die? You say Hammond didn't die? Do you remember Hammond? Well, of course I remember him. That was all an act. I'm not insane, doctor. It was the method. A great performance. One of my most convincing. But I'm not insane, doctor. I didn't shoot Sonny. I'm Sonny. I shot Hammond. But those tests, Mr. Shade, I'll prove you I'm sane. That, that record in there, the one that's still playing, that's called the Tartaphone method, right? Yes, that's correct. All right. Now, a normal person, after listening to it for some time, would have said he started to hear words in sentences. Isn't that what he would have told you? Yes. Well, I would have told you it was gibberish. I wouldn't want to appear normal. Yet, on many other tests, I was deliberately very normal. A skillful actor doesn't draw broad, obvious characters. He's more complex, manifold, subtle. Well, look, 
the, 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 the pictures. The pictures you showed me. These photographs are strange people. Now, remember I said I, I, I don't like any of them. That was a very normal reaction. A psychotic person would have said, I don't dislike any of them. I didn't want to overplay the insanity, don't you see? You certainly do know a lot about psychology, Mr. Shaden. Yes. Oh, you, you've got to believe me. Don't you see I could fool you all over again? I hated Roscoe Hammond for that review. He destroyed something with that review that took me years and years to build up. So I took the gun from the prop room, I bought some bullets, and I went to that club and I pumped one right into Mr. Hammond. And, and I must say, I, I'm a little surprised and almost disappointed he didn't die. I'm sorry. He did die that very evening. Oh, no. He's not alive? No, Mr. Shade. And you're not insane. But the papers, the, the, the affidavits and the commitment, I heard you. You signed them. Wrong again. We signed the indictment for murder. You tricked me. You fooled me. But I don't understand. It was a great performance. It was subtle, skillful, and convincing. I'm sorry it wasn't convincing enough. It wasn't a great performance. So, Hammond wrote the truth. I am a perennial juvenile. I never did grow up. I never can wear long pants. But I finally killed Sonny. Just as sure as I killed Mr. Hammond. Next on a and &E, blackmail, kidnapping, and murder leave a trail from a country hideout to London as Colin and family are discovered on Suspense Hideaway. in the desert, all he had to show were two fistfuls of sand. The demise of the African campaign shattered Rommel's trust in Hitler and the Nazi mission. Follow the desert fox as his tanks roll across the Sahara. Give me a hand. This better be good, Paul. That's really mad. Thanks, Anita. 